Welcome to this special episode of Tuesdays with Andrea. I just wrapped up season three and uh, two nights ago, my dad called me and he goes, Mija, you have to, you have to interview Tony Guerrero with La Sombra. And uh, they're in town and I wanted to take advantage of this moment to honor a hometown hero. Uh, Tony Guerrero is with the band La Sombra. They um, are a major Tejano recording band um, in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And uh, Tony Guerrero, welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you're here. Well, thank you, for, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks to your dad. Also, you know, Arturo Rios. And um, first of all, I'm not a hero. I haven't saved anybody yet. <laughs> so until I <laughs> say something. Hometown legend? Well, Hometown. maybe something like that. Well, I grew up in, I, I grew up here in this area. Of, uh, you know, I lived here for many years. But yeah, but that's what we're here for. We're going to be ta- talking about La Sombra, how it started and all that. Yeah. And also to give you, I would say, the recognition you deserve. Um, because you did come from Aurora and you did make it into the Tejano music industry. And your music... And your dedication to your music, because I think music is so important and it's a language in and of itself. And so your dedication to your craft and your ability to create music that inspires and that touches people in ways that you probably will never know the full extent. But even the influences that you've made, I think, are very important. And so uh, that's one of my goals here is to give you the recognition that you deserve as part of your lasting career. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And Pues yes, well, let's platicamos. We'll, we'll let them know everything where that, like my nephew Jesse would say, we went from Westwood to Hollywood. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Westwood to Hollywood. And yeah. you made it big. So my tío Tony, so you have two big fans uh, in, in my dad um, and also my tío Tony, who is your nephew. Yes. And my tío Tony texted me this earlier and I thought it would be good to read it. He said in 1984, my uncle packed up and left Aurora in pursuit of following his dream of making it big in the Tejano music. 38 years later, he is known as an icon and legend and holds multiple awards for Artists of the Year and several gold and platinum albums. And I think that's major. I think that speaks to the influence that you've had in the industry, but also to people who just admire your ability to achieve and to go for it. I think that's a big deal. Yes, um... Well, you know, this is the first time I'm going to talk it like this, like yes. you're saying it. You know, yes, we conquered, we achieved, we 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 did all that and we must be doing something right. You know, 38 years later we're still we're still around. But I I always see myself as just like any other person, you know. I see awards and I get nominated for Grammys and stuff like that. But I just see myself as a as just like everybody else. I don't see myself as better than somebody else but then again i don't see anybody else better than me either you know because and um but yes we have accomplished a lot and we call our fans sombraholics you know holics <laughs> yeah we call our fans uh, sombraholics and, hashtag sombraholics <laughs> yeah yeah and uh we really appreciate you know the love and support they've given us we're going into um i can say over four decades my nephew's saying 38 years because we went to texas in 84 but we had already been playing since like 75 or somewhere around there. So it's already a little bit over four decades. You know, we've been around that long. And and thanks to God and the Sombraholics, uh, you know, I think we've been doing something right. And um, we will continue to uh, use it till the Lord says you can't do it no more. You know, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Thank you to everybody out there. Thank you to you. You know, um, it's it's like a team. Yeah. You know, yes, the artists uh, create some music and stuff like that. But then we have you guys. You know, that we that do what we're doing right now. You know, you're promoting me. You're promoting my my name, La Sombra. You know, and all all the DJs, radio stations, all the media. You know, and most of all the fans. You know. Well, most of all the Sombra Alex. Yeah. And that's important. And um I I care about the message and I care about wanting to send a message or share the message of, of your story okay. in a in a new way that helps people to take away the pieces that inspire and uplift. So more more so than just being a marketing piece or a promotion piece for you, there's there is information that you have gained over your life that 
is very important for the next person to hear. Maybe mm -hmm. they haven't heard your story yet. Maybe younger generations aren't familiar with La Sombra in the way that other people are, but they're going to know your story. And I want them to know your story in okay. a way that's that's great. Okay. Um, so let's start with, so a Grammy nominated. Did you yeah. win any awards? What, what's, what's been kind of like the, the peak of your career or achievements? Uh, the, the biggest peak of, was as far as awards was being nominated for a Grammy. Yeah. Which was in back in 92, I think. Uh-huh. But. How did you wait? So how did you learn that you were nominated? It was all over the news after we got nominated that, <laughs> you know, so, so we started freaking out, you know, ourselves, you know, we're nominated for a Grammy. And said, wow, that's pretty cool. And um, we've been nominated for various different awards in, in the Tejano music industry. Uh, but the Grammys is one of the biggest ones. And uh, it was, yeah, we, it was very exciting. You know, we have the plaques and everything at home, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm living in San Antonio right now. Yeah. You know, so... um it's, it's it's a great feeling, you know. Um, it was exciting. I, honestly, when I went to the Grammys, I totally forgot why, why I was there. I saw Boys to Men over here. <laughs> I saw Color Me Bad over here. So I was trying to take pictures with everybody. You were being a fan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so I totally forgot why I was there, you know. And we didn't win, but the thing about it was that we were nominated. You yeah. Know? But, and it was a lot of fun getting to meet so many artists that I would see on TV and stuff like that. And see, because see, I see myself as a, just an ordinary person, you know, but then I saw all these people that I would see on TV and, you know, it was, it was pretty awesome. And being able to be in the same room with these people that you look up to, who's been, who's an artist that has really impacted you? Me? Um, there's so many, there's so many, but if you really put it that way, I'm, I would have to say my mom. Oh. My mom has... From since I was a little baby, she would sing to me. I think that's where I got my singing from, from her. How I learned how to harmonize from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she would sit me on her lap when I was like maybe five, six years old. And she would, my mom didn't know how to read. She didn't know how to write. She couldn't, she didn't even know how to uh, write her name. She, whenever they ever asked her for their signature, she would sign a little cross. But she could sing. She could sing. And, and um, <clears throat> she would sit me on her lap and... And then she would start singing to me. She would sing to me almost every day and singing so much to me. I, I started, I think that's how I started learning Spanish too. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started learning the lyrics to the songs. And so at one point when she would start singing, I would start singing with her. And then once I started singing her, then she started harmonizing me. And I think that's how I learned how to harmonize and, and do all that stuff as far as vocally. So she was also a musician or she was just gifted at, at song? She was just gifted at singing. She would never did anything like perform or stuff like that. She would just sing to herself. Yeah. You know, and to me, before us, my brother Cruz, who is, was, is, is a big part of La Sombra, he had a band also. But before my brother Cruz, it was my our sisters, Maria Luisa, uh, who was a big song, successful songwriter for La Sombra, and my sister Felipa, what that which is Tony's mom, mm -hmm. my nephew that wrote that, and uh, they used to sing. They used to be called Las Hermanitas Guerrero. So there's a lot, of, a lot, a lot of musical. They came out of my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad played a little bit of guitar, but my mom did a lot of singing. You know. So. so talk to me about those early years. Did you guys? So you grew up in Aurora, born in Aurora. No, I was born in Brownsville, Texas, uh -huh. and we used to come up north to. Um, Ohio, Michigan, here in Illinois, or go up towards Montana. After we used to come out here as migrant workers and work in the fields. You know, you name it, we picked it: tomato, everything, strawberries, watermelon. We picked it, and uh, one day uh, during the winter time, my dad just decided not to go back to Texas and got a job during a factory job during the uh, winter, and we stayed up here, and and that's how we ended up staying up here in, up north. Okay. And then we spent a lot of time here in um in Aurora, Illinois, Chicago. Here. And after we found out we could well we thought we could sing or you know, so we started cre uh learning how to play instruments and stuff like that. Mhm. Mm and then how so you realized you had a gift of singing and then you got into instruments. How did your band start? Like how what was the beginning of the band? 
and your journey into moving to Texas from Aurora. My brother Cruz was at the time playing with another band called um, Los Cinco Latinos, La Con and then they changed it to La Conexión Latina. And they used to practice in my basement. And, man, I was about maybe 11 years old, 10 years old. And then, um, well, they had all their equipment in my basement. That's where they would practice it. Mm -hmm. So I would go down there and started messing, started messing with them. Uh, with my brother's keyboard and and I learned it before that I had tried to I I like brass a lot mm -hmm. trumpets saxophones and stuff I wanted to learn a uh, saxophone so I told my dad to buy me a saxophone he bought it and I couldn't and I tried to play what these records uh, artists would play on their had recorded and I I told my dad it's too hard I can you give me a trumpet <laughs> so he got me a trumpet and I tried a trumpet too and I I couldn't get it you know it's so I left it alone, but then when my brother and my cousins used to practice in my house, I would go into the basement and start messing with my brother's keyboard. And I just picked it up and learned out it all on my own. And that's where it all started. And then it's a, it's a big family thing. The uh, family that my brother was playing with have uh, younger brothers also, which are my cousins also. So they also started learning how to play guitars and stuff like that and bass and we just started getting together in the basement like they did and and jamming out. Mm -hmm. So were you making Tejano music or are you making just what kind of songs were you doing? Well, I liked all kinds of music. I started perform playing keyboards with this uh, band here. Uh, I can't remember the name, but we would play all like cumbias. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then I started performing uh, with another group that would play top 40. I would play keyboards for them. It was an awesome band, and then I then I started La Sombra with some my family, you know, with Jesse, our Tony's brother, mm -hmm. and um, Frankie Trevino, our cousin, and we were around for a few years, maybe five six years before we recorded our first single forty five vinyl record, and um, that's how we got we started here in this in the Aurora area, Chicago area, and once we did a whole LP. A vinyl record. Uh, we changed the name to La Sombra de Chicago. Why La Sombra? But I going back to again my my brother, the band my brother my, and my cousins were playing with. You know, I was trying to get a name for the my band, and one of my cousins says, "Why don't you call it La Sombra de la Conexión Latina?" You know, the shadow of the connect the Latin connection. So I went to my mom. My mom says. Mingo says I should call it La Sombra de la Conexión Latina. My mom says, you ain't nobody's shadow. <laughs> she <laughs> says, if you want it, you can call it the shadow, but you are nobody's shadow. You are you, mijo. And so I kept the name La Sombra, and that's how I got it. And later on, we added La Sombra de Chicago. So is there a, um, a meaning behind the shadow, like La Sombra? Why the shadow? Well, it's because... Oh, is it because originally you felt like you were in their shadow? Well, it wasn't even my idea of calling la, calling it the shadow of the Latin the Latin connection shadow. You know, it's like they're the originals and you're the shadow. Yeah. Of them. Yeah. You know, like paying respect. Yeah. Almost. That was the original yeah. like well, thought it could process. Work, it could work both ways. It's like paying respect, or you're trying to be like us. Yeah. You know, so you're a shadow. You know, so that's why my mom said, you're nobody's shadow. You, you are you. Are you. You're la sombra. Yeah. And you're so, the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's how the name came, came up. Smart woman. <laughs> yeah. Right? It worked out for you. <laughs> yeah. She, she, in her own way, she was kind of smart and uh, very smart. And, um, and, and like I said, then later we added the, La Sombra de Chicago. So um, when you're starting out and you're making music and you said it was like four or five years before you made your first single what are those early days like as a as musicians trying to make it did you lose hope did you ever have doubt did you was the struggle real in those early stages or were you like emboldened by your dream honestly i never dreamt about it i never dreamt about it i loved music i was playing music out of heart i had my 40 hour job once i was 14 14, 15 years old, I went and got a part-time job. Where at? Oh, uh, well, there's a place called Seaboard 
a company in Bristol. Okay. And then I started working at the Caterpillar Cafeteria, también, you know, also. And um, I would work my 40 hours. And on the weekends, you know, I would have to go rent a little U-Haul and, and then go perform Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then by the time I got home, it was already 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I had to unload the equipment. Then I had to go drop out the, the little U-Haul, and then I had to be at work at 7. So... <laughs> I did it out of love, you know. I never, I never dreamt that a La Sombra was going to blow up the way it did, you know. You just loved the music. Yes, making so music. I, I, yeah, I never dreamed about the trying to be somebody or blow up the way the band did, you know. I never thought about it, you know, and it it just happened, you know, and uh, thanks to all the Sombra holics, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it just happened, you know. I I never really dreamed about it, and and then after a while, you know, I said, "Whoa, what's going on here? There's a lot of money coming in, and this is, you know." So then I kind of like started looking at it as a business, also, uh -huh. you know, because I, I was doing it out of heart, you know. Were you making money the first four years, three years? Well, we would play for weddings, quinceañeras, and open up for. Um, I don't like to say open up. We would, we would perform for <laughs> with bigger bands that would come from Texas to play town music over here. I always give advice to the uh, new kids. I said, never say you're going to open up for somebody. Never say you're going to open up for somebody. Say, hey, we're going to perform with so-and-so, and we're going to perform with so-and-so, but never say you're going to open up for anybody because all you do is put yourself down, you know, so. It seems like you have um, a good a good esteem in that way. You're really conscious of not putting language out there that would diminish you or your performance. Yes, you know, and well, at first I didn't think about it like, like that, you know. Um, it was because I just loved it, you know, just loved playing music, you know, and and uh, and, and I would always say, ah, oh, we're going to play with so-and-so or perform with so-and-so. And I never thought about it as we're going to open up, we're going to open up. But then some somebody started telling me, hey, you guys going to open up or something? I go, open up. No, I don't understand that. I didn't understand that language at first, you know. And then, but then I caught on to. It. I said, "No, we're going to perform with so and so, and we're going to perform with so and so. We're not going to open up for nobody." And why know? is that important for young, like newer artists to know and to be conscious of that? Why? It's like going back to when I said I'm just an ordinary person like everybody else. It's like I know Michael Jackson has he had his humongous. But in reality, he's just another person like you, like me, like him, mm -hmm. you know. We're all just another person, you know, and some of us just uh, have more money than others. Some of us are more popular than others. But in reality, we're all just another person like each everybody else. So that's why when they tell me uh, for the newcomers, I tell them, you know, never say you're going to open up for anybody. You're just as good as they are. They're just known you know, more people know them. Yeah, more people know them. But in reality, they're just another person like you. But they're not better than you. Yeah. And you're not better than anyone else. So exactly. You treat everyone the same and everyone has yes, equal value. That's me. That's my heart. You know, so. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's talk about. Uh, so now you formed La Sombra. You made your first hit single. How did this come about? Like, was this a time where you just kind of met the right people, got into the right studio, and then you know, created a song, a hit song, were you surprised that it became a hit? Yes. Nothing was planned. We just wanted, it was, everything was just like, we're, 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 hey, let's try to record something. And, you know, just out of love for the music. And my sister who wrote many hits for La Sombra, golden platinum hits for La Sombra, she wrote uh, Mi Guarita Coca-Cola for us. And we recorded it. Like I said, you know, we weren't planning. Um, well, I wasn't. I don't know about the rest of the guys, what they were thinking, but I, I was just doing music out of love. And and uh, she wrote the song for us, and I don't know if she knew or what she was doing either. Uh, you know, she's talented, but, obviously. Yeah, and, um, but she wrote many hit, hit songs for La Sombra, so she wrote the first song for us, and, and it was a big, gigantic hit, which was uh, Mi Guerita Coca-Cola. Okay. You know, and, uh, but... Yes, we were planning on recording and stuff like that. We told ourselves, let's save up some money and, and record, you know. And um, 
out of love. Out of love. So were you already in Texas at the time or were you no. here? No, we were still here in, in, in Aurora and we rented the studio to go do the, our recordings. Is it true that you started at the Stardust Ballroom, which is now the Paramount Arts Theater? Oh, yeah. Actually, our, our very first show was there at the Stardust. How did that feel, having your first show in your hometown, with people coming to see you play? Man, I was so nervous. Really? It was the very first one. <laughs> but it, it turned out great after all. And then after that, from there on, it was all history. Okay. So um, you guys had a hit. And now you're getting popularity here. What gives you the courage to say, I'm stopping, I'm going to quit my job? Because you're working still steady jobs up until probably around that time. What gives you the the confidence to say, hey, I'm going to go full, pursue this full time and I'm going to move and take us to sh to Texas? Um, you know, I had just passed the test to work at the post office. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I had just passed it, you know, and... I was very proud of myself because we come from an uneducated family. I had just taken the test and I had passed it, but I just made a choice to go. Um, took a chance with the music. I got out again, again out of love, and we did it. And it turned out that it we were wasn't luck, nothing, nothing that uh, with luck. Just I believe in, in God, you know, mm -hmm. in Him. And again, I wasn't. Planning, I would just record it. I mean, some other people got involved and they presented our record to a record label in Texas, and and they started distributing to radio stations, and it, it just blew up. So then you, so it was a record label in Texas, and then you just built an audience there. Yeah, well, it had a lot to do. La Sombra had a lot to do, um, n not just with the music that we were performing, and one of the things that helped us a lot was we were totally like one of a kind different no disrespect to all the groups in the Tejano music industry but we were totally a little different because my passion for music from the beginning was hip-hop R&B mm -hmm. and then when I got Pepper and Harvey joined the band they had a three-piece band that they played nothing but covers of rock music, Kiss, and all that stuff. So when we would do our shows, live shows, we would mix the Tejano with the hip-hop and the R&B and stuff, and, and we would do a lot of choreography to our, our, our music and shows, you know, and so that made us a lo whole lot different mm -hmm. than what's not happening in the Tejano music. You know, we were like a... Johnny Canales started calling us a number one show band, you know, yeah. like that, stuff like that, you know, which in reality, man, the English market, you know, hip hop, R&B, the rock and roll, they had bigger, bigger shows, you know. And so that's what we were trying to started trying to do, you know, mix the hip hop, like I said earlier, with rock and Olo Tejano and try to do different things with using the effects on stage that. And bringing all that into La Onda Tejana that nobody was using or mm -hmm. doing. And that's what made us or helped us a little bit more than just recording music, you know, mm -hmm. our showmanship that what we did on stage to Tejano music. So that was your, your unique contribution was being one of their pioneer bands to yes. bring hip hop, R&B style, choreography into Cumbia, into Tejano. Yes, that's what it was. And... You guys were a pioneer in that way. Kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, yes. Like oh, I would, uh, another band that I can think of that does that um, is Cumbia Kings, which I know was influenced by your music. Well, they're my family. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that's, a, that's a, incredible. Like it just shows the level of your, of one person who doesn't want, who's yeah. not meaning to change the world, yeah. but is doing that just by making and creating music he loves. Yeah. Actually, the owner of the Cumbia Kings is my nephew, Cruz. Yeah. You know, so he's the owner of the Cumbia Kings. And I got my nephew. He was part of La Sombra. He was a keyboard player for La Sombra before he went to, uh, did the Cumbia Kings. My nephew, Alex, which is son of my sister who wrote all the songs for us, he has K1, Kings 1. And they just started doing Kings 1 again because he went um, to work with my nephew, Cruz, with the Cumbia Kings for the past five years. And now they're going back to K1. 
So there's a lot. Of, we're a big family involved in the music business. My sister Yoli has a son that's doing Trilogy Mafia here in 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 A Town, and and they do rap. Okay. You know, and he's got. Uh, they're called Trilogy Mafia and Los Bad Hombres because they they rec- they perform with live instruments and stuff like that, like La Sombra does. You know, like because I say that because usually rap music they usually hire a, have a DJ, you mm-hmm. know, and they and they're playing samples and stuff like that. My my own, my son is involved in the music too. He started with me with La Sombra, but he totally took a different turn and he's doing rap music now. And he's with a group called the Frito Gang, and they're doing very well. They 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 had like over three million streams on the what, first song, so that they're doing something good. So that's awesome. The show is like, um, obviously it's a family business and it yeah. sounds like music, of course, runs in your family. You guys have several talented musicians. I think about um, my Tio Tony, his son, Isaac Horta, who is a, yeah. a young, he is so good with the with the drums and Isaiah will probably be his his rock band manager in the, in the future. But mm-hmm. this is the, the talent and also... I think the passion to music that I think is is awesome to see it continue. I he sent me a video of him of Isaac and I asked him if I could post it and he got really really a big good response on it. Yeah. I saw him when he first started learning and I've been told that when kids, you know, they'll get involved with music or dancing and stuff like that till they're about five, six years old. And if they keep it up after that, that means they're going to do it. So I noticed Tony's a little boy doing that at that age. So I said, well, I'm going to wait and see what happens. Uh, you know, cause of what they had told me, uh-huh. uh, they told me or, or I read it in a magazine or something like that. And then when he sent me that video, I said, oh, my God, you know, this little <laughs> boy, he's, he surprised me yeah, big time. So I asked him, can I post this video? And I posted it. And he got a really good response on it from the people. He's awesome. Yeah, he is. Very and awesome. They're, they're both very, very talented kids. And um, also shout out to my tia Elena who helped me kind of form some questions because, you know, my dad called me Thursday and today's Saturday morning. So I'm over here getting questions together. So I was on the phone with them and they're helping me. Hola tia Elena. Hola tia. How are you? (laughs) Um, Okay. So then how is it working with family and being like having family in your business? Like literally. (laughs) Well, do you have brothers and sisters? I have a tw- I have um, two brothers and two okay. sisters. Well, I don't know about your family, but my family is a bigger, bigger family. And how many siblings? Well, I have a total of five sisters. Okay. And five brothers. Okay. Two brothers that passed away, and, and then my brother got and me. Okay. And but um, like any other family, you know, we have our good times. We fight. We get mad at each other. So. We get mad at each other, <laughs> you know, and because uh, there's there's so much talent there, you know, there's so much talent, you know, to where some can do their own thing, you know, some can are at the point where they can do everything themselves, you know, and and me, I can do every, everything myself now, you know, my nephew, some of my nephews that I mentioned earlier, Cruz from the Kumi Kings, Alex from K1, they do everything themselves también. Of course, we have the the band to perform live, you know. But going back to what you were asking, yes, we we get along, we get into fights, you know, and it's 
typical, you know. Yeah. Just like any other family. Just you know? get over it after yeah. a few, after a little while. And if we don't get over it, I'm always in the middle trying to get, trying to get over it. <laughs> yeah, peacemaker. <laughs> try to make, try to, <laughs> try to get, yeah, to be the okay. peacemaker. Anything that you like about working with family that sticks out to you, other than the benefits of being able to have that quality time? Well, I worked with family for a long time. Then I stopped working with family, and then I'm working with family again. So either way, it's good. Either way, know, it's good. But when the family's not there, you start missing the family. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. So then um, you guys hit it big, and you're now La Sombra, and you're getting wait, popular. Wait, wait, wait you got to say La Sombra. La Sombra. <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you guys are big. You guys are known. Are you, you know, in Texas, are you guys pretty popular at that time? Uh, in Mexico, what was your main markets? And what how? What was the frequency of your guys' is like traveling? Were you on, constantly on the road? Were you visiting different countries? From maybe from 1975 to 83, it was all in the all in, just in the Midwest. Okay. And then 83, we recorded the first album and blew up and when it was released in 84. So it was basically more of just Texas, the Hano music, you know. Mm -hmm. And then in 1981, we, we recorded our first record that we did a crossover into the Mexican market. Mm -hmm. And so, and then after that, it was pretty much the United States and all over Mexico. Any favorite, any like favorite cities, favorite towns, favorite venues? There's so many, so many. Uh, favorite me, performance? The, you know, I'll have to say Los Angeles and here in Chicago and Monterrey, Mexico. Monterrey. And what was that like, like being on the road and having fans, having groupies? Well, Groupies? <laughs> Did you have groupies? No? Well, I guess all musicians do. <laughs> when I first started music, I always wanted to be like Michael Jackson. You know, nobody can be. There's nobody who can be like Michael Jackson, you know. Uh, but that I would always practice break dancing and, and try to learn how to Michael Jackson would dance and stuff like that back then. We went to Texas and here work in the United States and the fans love you. You know, but then when you cross over to Mexico, they treated us over there like if I was a Mexican Michael Jackson. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You know, so good, I, good. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, we would go to do TV shows and stuff, and I would freak out because they were running or chasing the bus. And I go, I've seen all this happen to Michael Jackson. <laughs> you know, so it was, it felt pretty cool, pretty awesome, you know. The Mexican uh, Michael Jackson, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, it, it was awesome. It was awesome, you know. Um, and so now we go both ways, you know, the United States and Mexico. Um, what about sex, drugs, and rock and roll during that time? Having exposure at a high level to all of this stuff, what was that like? As a musician, I'm sure you've seen it all. I've seen it all. 99% of the people don't believe it, but I've never smoked. I've never drank. I've never done any kind of drugs. I've been offered, you name it, I've been offered. Many of the people that have offered it to me, they say they don't believe me that I don't do anything. And then many tell me, man, I wish I could be like you. And... Manny would tell me, man, you're square, you know. <laughs> I go, you call me what you want to do, but, you know, uh, I've never liked it. I mean, I tasted beer, I tasted alcohol, and I never liked it. What? So aside from not liking it, did you have any other, like, conviction, or, or was there an ethical or moral stance, or what kept you? Because what I hear, especially from artists, is in having exposure, sometimes they go crazy, um, or it can be a big downfall, a big detractor from your career. In your case, you didn't go that route, and you you kept square. Do you? Like, See, was you're there... calling me square too. <laughs> <laughs> Did it help you? Did it, what was the reason that kept you focused? Well, I hope I don't offend anybody with what I'm about to say, but since I was sober all the time, <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> since I was sober all the time, I was never, I've never been mean to people. I've always tried to be nice to people, you know, and because I know a lot of times you can't control it. You know, I have family that have been involved in drugs and liquor, and I've seen them that they, they couldn't control it. Yeah. You know, but it happens not only to my family, to everybody. We're like, it goes back to the beginning, you know, we're just normal people like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And the things that would turn me off is like when somebody really drunk, a fan would come up to me and, and start talking to me and, and they're spitting all over me, you know, and they don't notice it because they're feeling good or whatever. I'm noticing it because I'm sober. Yeah. You know, things like that, you know, and then I don't really party much because if I would go to parties, everybody's drinking and stuff like that. And I'm just standing there, you know, watching everybody act like they're acting. I'm not saying you're acting like a fool or whatever, but it happens sometimes. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and I'm not perfect, you know, even though I'm sober all the time, I'm still not perfect. I'm not a perfect person. I try to be. That's the only thing, you know, I've seen family members. I've seen uh, friends that have so much talent, beautiful voices or beautiful at playing music instruments and the drugs or the alcohol get uh, yeah. takes it away from them mm -hmm. you know yeah and and uh me like i'm sober all the time i see everything mm -hmm. you know I, I, number one i've never liked it and number two is that from being sober all the time i see what it does to the people to people yeah mm -hmm. um what inspired you as an artist during that time so you're, you're making music what you love and you enjoy doing that but what drove you to continue to pursue and push push through? Mostly, again, my mom, my sisters that I mentioned earlier, they recorded some records too, and both of them had beautiful voices. And uh, then later on, when I I was I, I started singing with my mom, you know, I said, well, maybe I I can do something with singing, you know. And we started creating a band, you know, and and. and is there a song that your mom used to sing to you or you used to sing together? Oh, so there's so many old songs that she would sing from her time, you know, and um, actually we performed a lot. I didn't record any of her songs that she would sing like those. They were old songs. I haven't. We were into more recording original music because we wanted uh, people to uh, like what we create, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, again, it was out of love. But at the same time, you know, I want to be original at what I'm doing it, yeah. you know, and that's what we did. My mom would sing a lot of old songs. We would play a lot of the songs that she would sing to me. And we, would, we would perform them live. Uh -huh. Do you have any personal favorites of yours that stay in your heart forever? <laughs> well, yeah, the song that my mom would always sing, Te vas, angel mío, te vas, te vas ahí. Sin saber que aquí dejas un corazón a sufrir. You know, that's one of the great songs that my mom would sing. For uh, English speakers, what does that song say? Uh, it's, saying, it's saying like, my angel is, you're leaving me, you know, and you're leaving without knowing the pain you're leaving in my heart. Because mm. yeah. she had to let you go, in a way. Because yeah. she had to let you go to go yeah. perform. Yeah. Um, what did she say when you guys made it big? I think my mom and dad were like me, like, like they never thought about it that, well, you know, and she knew that I love music and it was just like a hobby. Mm -hmm. And, um, honestly, I don't remember. No, I take it back. I see. I do remember her just, just saying, um, Saying things like, go do your thing, Miko, or you sounded real good. Because every once in a while, we would take him to our shows, you know. And But I do remember her saying, yeah, that you guys sounded really good. I'm proud of you. And this and mm -hmm. um, when you're touring around, so you had your your family, your core family, as a, a major source of inspiration. Um, and you mentioned a son. Is he your only child? Yes. Um, did you ever get married at all? Or? Me? Yeah. No, I've never been married. Was it because of the band life or... I've always been scared to get married. Really? Yeah. How come? I see so many people getting divorced. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my mom and dad never divorced. 
you know, and my brother Cruz and his wife are going to, uh, August 5th, they're celebrating the 50th anniversary, mm-hmm. you know, and I was, I always thought of me about, about it like that. But then I, I would see so many people going through a hard time, breaking up, getting divorced. I go, why would I want to get married if I end up, I'm going to end up getting divorced or, you know? Yeah. I would think, why am I going to waste money? <laughs> and <laughs> I worked hard for this money. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's the way I thought, but I regret it, you know, now that, because uh, all my life I saw my mom and dad together, mm-hmm. you know, and I regretted that I never gave my son a brother or sister or that his mom and dad are not together, mm. you know. It ended up happening to me what I thought could happen, yeah, you know, and and it, it did, and it's life, you know. So yeah, um, that's the only thing that I regret, you know. The but I I talked to my we me and my son have have had conversations about that. I asked him, how do you feel, you know, about about not having a brother and sister, and I I kind of like apologize to him, you know, for n- not giving him a brother and sister, and we talk about it. You say like, I'm good, Dad. I go, and I now would ask him uh, if I was to give you a little brother and sister, uh, how would you feel about that? I mean, because he now he's 25 years old. Well, not, not lately. I haven't asked him about that, but maybe when he was about 18, 19, I it was the last time I asked him. He said, "Well, I'm good the way I am right now. You pay a lot of attention to me." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you guys have a really close relationship. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. And you're leaving him a legacy mm. of talent, of music, of love. The mm. same love your mom gave you, you're leaving him. That's amazing. Let's talk about the influence, the, the Tejano industry as an industry. Is it hard to break into that market? Is it a close-knit community? And what are some, like, did you did you know Selena? Mm. <laughs> that's um, what I want to know. <laughs> uh the Tejano music is not as hard to break into as rap music is, as rock and roll is. It's hard, but not as hard as these other types of music, you know. Um, Did you appreciate the industry? Were they good to you? And is it close community of people or it's, recording it's, labels? It's, 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 it's kind of, especially in Tejano music, there's a lot of jealousy. Really? Yes. Wow. I'm going to let it out. <laughs> okay. You know, there's a lot of jealousy, you know, in hip hop music. I think it's everywhere, but uh, more in the hip hop, R&B, in the rock and roll, it seems like they're your friends and you can work with other artists. And then in the Mexican industry, it's like, well, the uh, Tejano industry, it's, I see it like, and this is an example. Say you're an artist and I'm me, La Sombra. And blah, blah, yeah, oh, yeah, we're cool, and this and blah, blah. And I turn around and say, oh, the hell was here, you know? Okay. It's, 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 that, is it pride? Is it, it machismo? I think, I think so. Like the Mexican kind of like, I can do this? I mean, this. there's enough for everybody. Yeah. You know, but some don't see it like that, you know? And I'm glad you saw it like that. Yes. I mean, but then when they started doing it to me, I told myself, well, I can be the same way. But only to the people that do it to me, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm not that kind of person. Right. But there is a lot of people out there like that, especially in the Tejano music. Okay. But, do, and, but you don't regret working and, and making Tejano music and making cumbias? And... No, I don't. I don't. Um, I, 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 again, I love music, you know. Okay. And, and I'll keep doing music. Even if I ain't making no money, I'll still keep doing music. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing it, until, like I said earlier, until God says, you're too old, you need to lay it back and relax or you're whatever. You're going to keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> did you know Selena? Did I know Selena? Yes. Um, we did many shows with her. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to go to her brother's, well, A.B., I used to go to his house. Hey, Vicky Quintanilla with Los yeah, Cumbia when, Kings. When, when we were in Corpus, um, way back, way back, before um, they got very popular, you know, I used to go to their house and stuff like that and hang out with Davey a little bit. Not much, just a couple of times, you know. And we would do a lot of shows together. 
I think one of the last shows that we did together was out here in the Midwest. And if I'm not mistaken, in Kalamazoo, Michigan, I think it was, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I, I kind of like knew them. What was, what was they like? What was she like? <laughs> well, in she, person. I I, she's like my, like, I, it's Selena and then Mariah Carey. And then, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, she, she has, her talent was beautiful. What about any big setbacks professionally, career-wise? Anything that could have stopped you that, or a time when you almost quit? Or you did quit maybe, or like what, do, is there any part of that where if a younger musician is coming up and they reach a point that maybe stops them, like what was that time for you? Uh, just stopping like that, I, I never, I've never been at that point mm -hmm. because I love uh, the love I have for music. But we were in a very bad bus accident in Saltillo, Mexico to where, you know, the, some of the guys got really, got hurt really bad. Gracias a Dios, you know, que nobody died. There were 16 of us in the bus. And if you look at the bus, it, it you, we would say, God, whoever was in it didn't survive. But we all did. We just got really, I didn't, I didn't get hurt at all, but the family did. You know, they got really banged up. Some of them got really banged up. And I just asked myself what's going to happen after this. And 2019, 2020, 21, I had 11 surgeries. My health just took a completely turn, uh, a bad one. And, and I had 11 surgeries and, and a lot of complications with my stomach. And, um, but thank God I'm still here. And now I, I my, my last surgery was, uh, August last year. And, um, I've been okay since, so Good. I'm back at it. Did the pandemic affect you at all? Like, did that have any impact on? Just got me mad. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, because we had to stay indoors. We couldn't perform. Nobody could go out. Yeah. You know, other than that. And I caught it too in December of last year. And my son locked me up in the room for I don't know how many days. <laughs> He'd come and knock on the door. He would, Dad, your food's on the floor. You're going to get it. <laughs> I mean, of course, on the, on plates and stuff, but he yeah. wouldn't let me go out. He locked me up in the room. He wanted to keep you safe. The The only good thing about it was that I tested positive, uh -huh. but I didn't feel no symptoms at all the whole time. Oh, you're asymptomatic. Yeah, I didn't right. feel anything. You know. And life doesn't end at 60. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'm going to be 21. Uh, <laughs> I'm 63. 63. Yes. And you're still, what are your now goals? What are you, are you guys touring again? Are you with the band? Are you promoting music or like, what's, what's it look like now? And what do you want? Where do you want to take this? It looks right now. It looks like I'm starting over again for the fact that I just mentioned that I was past three years, you know, my health has really Mm -hmm. uh, took an over m my life. And, uh, and so it seems like during those three years, you know, promoters are scared to hire us, you know, everybody gets sick at one point or another one. Yeah. But since I guess since I was sick so long for a long time, you know, that's some of the things that I get, you know, and it took me a while to recover. That's another one. And, um, it's like I'm starting over again, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, everybody knows the name La Sombra still, though, you know. So. Yeah. And do you want to do you want to tour again? Do you want to keep making music? Do you still make new music? Yes, I still make music. I'm getting ready, hopefully, to release a new CD this year. Oh. And um, I still travel. Back maybe 15 years ago, I had a heart attack. And um, ever since then, I can I after 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 that. Since then, I have trouble getting in the elevator by myself. Did you have the heart attack in the elevator? No, no. Ever since I had the heart attack, I can't get in the elevator by myself. I get anxiety real bad. I didn't used to have it before that. So it's hard for me to get it. I haven't tried it, you know, so I'm thinking if I'm having a hard time getting in the elevator, how am I going to feel if I try to get on the plane? Yeah. You know, so I I do mostly, the, if the shows that I have, I, I drive. 
Yeah. Some of the guys fly sometimes, but me, I drive because I, I don't know. I think about it and I tell myself, what if I go and get a flight and I'm not going to be able to get on it? Mm-hmm. You know, but lately I've been able to get, get on the elevators. So, okay. so, so looking on, looking, looking good here, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All yes. right. And then you can still create music. What is that creative process like when you're creating new music? Is it getting in a room with the other musicians and putting out music? How, or do you go into a studio by yourself and do everything digital, digitally? Yeah. Like, it's 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 all. Um, I write a lot of songs, almost a song every morning. Really? Yes, I wake up between four and six in the morning, and and I'm just sitting there, laying there, and all these ideas come to my mind, you know, by themselves. And so I, I either record myself on the phone, or I start typing on my phone, and then later on, I'll email it to myself mm-hmm. to make sure I get it copyrighted. You know, so if, <laughs> once I email it to myself, you know, I have the proof that I wrote this song at this time, blah, blah. Oh, you if know. you email it, it's copyrighted? That's one way. Okay. That's the, uh, that's the, how you say it, the, the ghetto way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> what if, can you, what if you put it, because uh, if you do it in your notes, in your iPhone or something, does that count? Well, that helps too, because, you know, when, on, Nowadays, technology, you know, when you do something, it sets the date and the time on it. Yeah. You know, so it's pretty much proof that you did it on that, mm-hmm. you know. But if your phone breaks and it's not saved or anything like that. Then what? Know, then. But so, that's where email helps, yeah. the getaway. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I mean, it's still better to get it, send it, get it copyrighted, you know. Yeah. Through the Washington and stuff like that. But um, that's pretty much uh, what I do. I email, and when I produce the music and, and arrange, music arrangements to a song, I do the same thing. I email them to myself. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you have a writing ritual every morning, it sounds like. Pretty much, and yes. And then you, you use that as a source for creating new content. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. What advice would you give to n- new younger artists who are coming out now who want to be where you're at what do you tell them what's your message once you take that first step you know there's going to be it's not all going to be glory you know it's 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 uh it's 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 hard hard to say you know like for example i read in a magazine it took beyonce no destiny's child six years before they recorded a hit song Mm. i read in a magazine that's a long time, six years, but they never gave up. Mm-hmm. You know, they never gave up. And look at them now. Well, look at Beyonce now. You know, uh, I never looked at it or saw it like that. I, again, I was doing it out of love. But um, there's always going to be ups and downs, you know. And if you let the down part of it get to you, it's going to hold you back a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so I would say once you take that first step, keep going forward. Especially the younger kids, the education is very important. Education is very important. I see music as a gamble. Okay. You know, I see music as a gamble because everything I create, I don't know if I can say this on here or not, but everything I create sounds badass to me. (laughs) (laughs) You know, but the thing is, is the people going to accept it. Yeah. That's why I say to me, music is a gamble. So education is very important. Get your education because if it doesn't work out with your music, you have something back, uh, fall back on, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but in music, there is a lot of ups and downs. In the Tejano music, there's uh, a lot of backstabbing and stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of alligators out there, you know. My son's a rapper, you know, and in the rap music, I noticed that because I noticed one thing, you know, because they're a new group, rap group, and the promoters, they want the artists to pay them to perform. Yeah. I told my son, if you ever pay anybody to perform, I will beat your ass myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Don't fall for that scam. Well, I think social media would help now, right? Like, because it, the social media allows you to to make music and give it directly to your fans. Yeah, it right? helps a lot, you know. Before we wrap up, 
I'm going to ask you for two things. One is, what's going to be your last message to your sombra halics out there? Those who've been following you, those who are, are wanting to just hear what you have to say, what message do you want to leave to the sombra halics? Um, but before that, um, for those who want to be a la sombra in the future, um, what advice from a musician has helped you the most and that you would pass on? Um, it's okay to listen to other artists because there's so many and there's so many that have really good music and songs out there. And by that, you can create your own style of music, your own uh, songs. You don't have to be another sombra. I wouldn't recommend to try to be another sombra. Be yourself. You know, be yourself, and but it, it doesn't. It, 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 I get ideas from listening to other music. Mm -hmm. I get my own ideas, but I get ideas from listening to other music, you know, or other lyrics, you know, or just like um, today. I can write a song about today. I had an awesome interview, uh, and all this and that's happened. Please and, do. And, and, and <laughs> I could turn it. I could turn it around and say it was the best interview I had, or it was the worst interview okay, I had. Please don't. <laughs> you know, but you know, you, it, it's all what comes to your mind. You know. Yeah. So far, it's awesome. So far, it's bad. Been badass. Good. Uh, I'm glad. You know. I want this to be the most badass interview ever. <laughs> I don't know if you'll get mad, but. I'm sure he's going to watch this, but you're a way better person than your dad. <laughs> 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 no, uh, no, Arturo's cool. I'd like to send a shout out to Arturo. He was, uh, he, he's got some, uh, he's got a big show coming up um, September 24th in South Padre. But he, this is what he has planned. He's got the yeah. uh, Lonely Boys. Oh, I love the Lonely he, Boys too. He has a country band. He has La Sombra. And he has Frito Gang. Uh yeah, I think it's a pretty cool lineup, but he's got four different kinds of music. He's got rap music, the hound music, country music, and pop rock music. So I think it's going to be awesome. That's awesome. You know, and uh, it's going to be September 24th, I think. If not, look it up or it'll be promoted soon. So he's got some big plans coming up, you know. And I'd like to send a shout out to him also too. Well, yeah, you can't see him right now, but he's, he's one of the promoters up here in the Midwest también. Um, last night we did a, a meet and greet where we came t out here to, um, our world because, um, we had a, f a family member pass and we've been here all week. So, uh, we got us, we did a meet and greet last night, which went very well. As far as going back to the uh, question, be yourself, be yourself and, and be humble. Mm -hmm. um, do your talking on stage, do your talking with your music, you know, and um, and that's what I would do. So don't be afraid and don't be afraid to create your own music, your own. Don't yeah, be defined yeah. by other people's mm -hmm. definition of what you're creating. Explore, mm -hmm. break out and yes. make it your own. Yeah. Be, be you're nobody's shadow. Yeah, exactly. You're nobody's shadow. You, you and be you. Be you. I like that. Okay. And now to your Sombra Holics out there who have been following you, who um, love you. What do you want to say to them? I love them too. <laughs> <laughs> I love them too very much, you know, because with like we were talking about earlier, the way the media is now, you know, it, it's like you can talk directly to them almost every day and through media through the things that I've been in the past three years with my health, you know, the way they've been there for me, it's like they went beyond being there for me just for my music. Mm. You know, I feel like they've gotten a lot closer to me to where I can say we're like more like family than just fans and band or band and fans, you know, and I really appreciate it. You know, the way not only me or La Sombra, but my whole family, you know, uh, not just the Kumbi Kings, K1, Trilogy Mafia, or Frito Gang. You know, uh, it's like the entire family, you know. Yeah. And I really appreciate that, you know. And if I could, I'd give the world to each and every somebody out there. Mm. You know, and and um, 
the only one that can do it is God Almighty. Yeah. It's the, but all I can do is love you, pray for you, you know, and appreciate what you, the the time and that you've been there for us these past four decades. Yeah, I love that. And it sounds like what you're saying is you give the love that you've been given back to them, the love they give you. Yeah, something like that. You yeah. know, I really appreciate that. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. Mm. I appreciate you doing what you're doing here, this interview. It's been so awesome. So badass. Yeah, <laughs> badass. Good. Well, I pleasure, mm. pleasure having you on the podcast. Uh, thank you for sharing. And um, I wish you so much um, of the of the blessings of the world as well. Well, this is how awesome it is. Let's keep going. I don't want to leave now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> No, I really thank you very much. It's it's been an awesome interview, and I really appreciate it. And for you younger generations out there, if you haven't heard of La Sombra, check out their catalog. Check out their music. It's on it's it's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's out there. Check yes. it out. You won't be sorry. I like to mention uh, this kid that I've been working uh -huh. before we finish. His name is Christopher, and we call him El Angelito del Acordeón. And we also call him La Esperanza de la Musica Tejana. He's only 15 years old, and he's a monster on the accordion. A monster. He plays it beautiful. And I've been working for him, producing and arranging his songs for him. He's got three uh, song releases, because we just started this last year, I think it was, because of my health, you know. And and But look, be looking out for Christopher, El Angelito del Acordeon. And... Uh, and his recordings are also on all digital platforms and stuff like that. La Esperanza de la Musica Tejano? Yes, Tejana. Tejana. So this is that the hope of Tejano music? Yeah, he's the hope for Tejano music. Wow. We'll check him out too. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to Tuesdays with Andrea. There are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I appreciate you making the time to listen to mine. If you like this show and want to know more, check out TuesdaysWithAndrea.com or please leave a review on iTunes or drop a line in the YouTube comment section. Until next time, please stay kind in your mind, nice on the web, and stay hella hopeful in your heart.